Hey, it's Tammy with Real Southern Woman. I'm coming in. Um, I didn't get all dolled up today because Chris is home. And if I go in there, I wake him up. So y'all get to see me in my PJs without my makeup on. Um, I hope you're having a blessed day. The storm is coming through and will be coming through our area. It looks to me like our highest winds are going to be this afternoon probably about four or five i was wanting to go live uh, to cook then so i don't think that would be a smart thing because i'm sure the internet may be out um, if for some reason we lose our internet service remember if i don't show up tomorrow that's why um i will try and use my phone if for some reason our home internet goes out <coughs> excuse me so I will um, do what I can to make sure you guys know we're safe, all right? Um, and I hope if you're in the path or you're in Florida or, or along the areas that the storm is going to go over that you will also do uh, the same. I've got to go out. Well, Chris will do it when he gets up this morning. He's not going anywhere, of course. And he's got to bring in, you know, close all the... Um, umbrellas and do all that this morning so that's it on the storm my show and tell for the day is i am trying my best to figure out a way to get my bird watching on the live cam in the evenings around 5 30 ish because that's usually when the uh bunting shows up um, I had a lady walking by yesterday, and she said, I just love your yard. I just love your bird setup. And and I've never seen her before, so she may be a new neighbor. But I said, well, thank you. And uh, she was asking me about the bird feeders and stuff. And me and Chris were actually, I was tired yesterday, and I didn't do good yesterday. When I got off here, y'all are not going to believe this, but I was just out of sorts yesterday. And uh, so when Chris got back from riding, uh, taking a boat ride, I said, Chris, I don't know what's wrong with me, but we got to get out of here. You ever feel like that? You just want to escape like you're full of anxiety. That's how I felt yesterday. So I figured out what it was later, but I'll tell you that in a minute. So we got in the car and I said, we're going to go search for more cups. And instead of calling places, I just wanted to get out of the house anyway. It was one of those days. So my house is a mess. I need to wash clothes. But anyway, we had fun. So we went to um, Ross. They were, these were all together in a little shopping center in Yulee, which is next to uh, um, Amelia Island area. Okay is not that far from us instead of going to Brunswick. So I went into a Ross, I went into a TJ Maxx and a Home Goods, and none of them had the cups. Why do I have an alarm going off on my phone? I, somehow I've turned on the alarm on my phone, that's funny. Well anyway, they didn't have any of the cups. So I said, well, honey, we're just going to have to find a bales. So we looked it up and they had a bales and we drove in onto the island to go to the bales. And I've never seen anything like it. They had this huge bales. And then beside the bales, I've never been in a real bales. I've only been in bales outlets. Okay. I didn't even know there was such a thing. And so when we got there, they had this huge building that was a bales. And when you go, when you, when you went in, because it's a coastal area, I mean, everything, the most beautiful stuff you've ever seen to decorate your home for beachy looks was there. I've never seen so much beachy stuff in my life. I mean, they had it all decor for the walls, decor for the bathroom, decor for your bedroom. It was quite a sight to see, but everything was expensive because <laughs> it wasn't an outlet. They had all these shoes, and Chris, we went in the outlet first. I found about five cups, and so um, what happened is I only found the five cups. I, I was like, we went on this treasure hunt, and I only found five cups, but it's better than none. But I said, Chris, you check out in this outlet bales, and I'm going to go next door and see if they might have some cups. And, of course, they didn't. 
But I called him because he was looking for shoes. And I said, oh, you need to walk over here because they got all these shoes. He goes, Tammy, this is not a markdown place. This place is expensive. I said, well, I know. He goes, well, I'm not paying that for my shoes. And they don't really have a pair of shoes I want. I said, okay, fine. So we left. And I said, boy, do we go on a wild goose chase. And so what I'm going to do today, because I'll be here all day, I'm going to wash clothes today for sure. I shouldn't say this, but I'm going to tell y'all anyway. I don't even have a clean pair of panties. <laughs> I don't. I'm wearing Chris's underwear. <laughs> I told him yesterday. I said, what happened was, I don't know what happens to my panties. Y'all know I have those favorite panties. And I have them on my top sellers on the website. Well, I bought so many of those panties. And they keep disappearing. And so <laughs> I had bought uh, a pair, a pack for Cedar Town, but I only had three when I got down there. And I think I took a couple with me. But my daughters, I think they like them. And I think they get them when they come home. I really do. Because they disappear. I mean, where else are they going? And, and so anyway, I got ready. Uh, and I said, Chris, I don't even have a clean pair of panties. I said, I had to wear your underwear. And, you know, he wears um, boxer shorts, but they're really soft, the ones that I pick out for him. I think I got his on the website, too, and I can't remember. But anyway, <laughs> uh, I've got to order me some more. I just love them. He um, thought that was funny. He goes, I said, I don't even want to start a load of clothes. I'm not in the mood to wash clothes. Let's get out of here. And so today I've got to wash some clothes. And it really hasn't been that long since I washed clothes. It's just that, I don't know, I don't have enough of them. I'm going to order some this morning. Um, with that said, I'm, I'm on a rant this morning. Uh, so she's talking about my bird feeders. I was out there when we got home. I was so hot. Oh, my Lord, it was hot outside. And I was so tired because we've had road trips two days in a row. My neck was killing me. And y'all, my neck is not even supposed to be hurting. It's supposed to be numb. But I think what it is, is I think I've really overdone it because Monday, y'all wouldn't believe everything I did Monday. And then Tuesday, which was yesterday, I didn't do much around my house, but me and Chris went riding and being in the car is not good for it. <laughs> Oh, but anyway, I went out there and Chris claimed that he cleaned the water, uh, what do you call it? The bird bath. He claimed he cleaned the bird bath. Claimed is right. So I go out there and the bird bath is filthy. And so when we got home, I had to clean up the bird feeders, give them their food, clean up the bird bath. And that's when the lady walked by and told me how much she loved the yard and the bird feeders. So she was, she said, oh, we get a painted bunting. I said, he comes here every day. She went, what? I hardly ever see him. I said, he comes here every day. Y'all, the minute I cleaned that bird bath and walked away, walked away up onto the porch and Chris was fixing the hummingbird feeder. The bunting came as soon as I said that to her. Uh, so anyway, I was going to show you these soot balls because who likes these is the woodpeckers. Um, sometimes the other birds will get on them and eat them. The tip mouse likes them. Um, who else likes them? Oh, um, I don't know why, but the female cowbird likes them. Some of the um, smaller birds will eat off of them, like the chickadee and different ones, believe, believe it or not. I've never seen, it has a blue jay on it. I've never seen a blue jay eat this before. It's usually all the woodpeckers mostly, but they love the peanut butter. Love it. I would rather get it in a log form. These are soot balls. Um, I'd rather get it in a log form. They make these logs that are about that tall and about that big around, okay? And I have a feeder that I could put one down in instead of the soot balls. Um, and so I put a link up there today for the log peanut butter and the feeder that it goes in. Y'all, they love them, and it's fun to watch them on them. So if you don't have one of those and you like to bird, there's a link there. That's
that's my show and tell for the day. Um, all right. Hopefully, I'm not scared of the wind too much and the rain as long as we don't get tornadoes. You know, ugh, I hate tornadoes and I'm very scared of tornadoes. Um, and it is supposed to pass us in the evening, which is when it's hotter. So we'll see. Maybe I'll do a live cam so y'all can see the storm. Um, y'all ready to do Bible study? You know what? My Bible study today is, is labeled, um, hold on. I think pray for us. And it's pretty, it's pretty um, appropriate in a different way because we're, we're going to have the storm coming through today. But it's, but that was his subject today was pray for us. And he's actually talking about the ministry. Okay. So today's lesson. Oh, I was going to tell you this too, right quick before we get into the lesson. Yesterday when I got home, my neck was killing me. I mean, it was killing me and what's weird is it wasn't hurting like here's where they numbed it they numbed it right here and if i scratch it right there where that spine part is it's kind of numb feeling like i can't feel that right there i cannot really but where it was hurting was not right there it was hurting all down in here and up like on the side here anyway it was driving me insane I told Chris, but it's supposed to be bad for a couple of weeks. He told me not to put any heat on it, put ice on it. So I put some peas. I, I got me some frozen peas and used them. Now I got to cook them. And it didn't make it feel much better. And he said it would take it a couple of weeks before it kind of got back to normal. So anyway, let's go to Bible study. So y'all remember my neck. Even if I think I'm good to go, I'm not. I learned that yesterday. Um... I'm happy today. I think because I'm not. Oh, I forgot to tell you this too. I got a lot to say today. I figured out why I was in such a crappy mood. I take Lyrica. I've always taken Lyrica for years. And it is the kind of drug you can't just stop taking. Okay. <laughs> Apparently, when I filled up my medicine box, this was Saturday. Let's see, today is, yeah, Saturday. I forgot to put my Lyrica in there, and it goes in the morning and the evening. Now, Lyrica makes a big difference in how we feel when we have fibromyalgia. So, when I went to take my medicine last night, I said, oh, my gosh, because Chris asked me when I was feeling so bad. He goes, Tammy, are you sure you're taking your medicine? I said, yes, of course I'm taking my medicine. <laughs> so when I get in there last night, I figured out that my Lyrica was not in my medicine box. It hasn't been in there since Saturday. No wonder I was so full of anxiety because Lyrica is one of those drugs that you actually can withdraw off of. It's crazy. So it's amazing I've done as good as I have. So now I'm in a good mood. I took two last night. I thought, well, I haven't had it since Saturday, so I'm taking two. I'm not I'm not advising you to do that by any means because I've never taken two. But I figure, hey, it's got to get back in my system. And boy, do I feel better today. I thought I'd tell you all that before we got started. I'm a nut. I'm a nut, nut, nut. All right. Today, it is Charles Haddon Spurgeon's morning reading at the blueletterbible.org. I got that link on there. You can click it and see the Bible study. I've also copy-pasted my revised edition because I take out a lot of his wording to make it a little bit more uh, user-friendly. In other words, for us, the vocabulary is just, I know he had... If his vocabulary was that good, I'm amazed. I think he must have had a, a the, what do you call it, thesaurus or whatever it is, because he uses some cra crazy wild words. Now, Chris would know what they meant, but I'm just not built that way. 
Um, so I don't know what they mean. I have to look them up. All right. So I take those words out and replace them is what I do with my version. And I put on the bottom that it's edited by me. All right. July the 7th morning reading. Brethren, pray for us. First Thessalonians 525. Now I read the whole chapter of First Thessalonians 5. And um, it's talking about the day of the Lord when uh, he comes back. And it's talking about, um, but it's a, it's a different subject. because There's two subjects in the chapter, okay? The first, let's see, 11 verses is talking about the day of the Lord. Um, and you know, people act like that when the world comes to an end and all that crazy stuff starts happening and the... And that, you know, we got to worry about all that. That's, I don't know why people think that's such a wonderful study. The book of Revelation, they want to study what horrible things are going to happen. And I'm like, why do you even care? Because we're not going to be here anyway. You know what I mean? Not that I'm not saying that I don't care about the Word of God. I'm just saying there's people that are obsessed with it. And that's all they want to talk about. My mama said that her daddy was a pastor and he got a kick on that. Got on a kick of that. Where That's all he studied. And he, she said, I was a little girl. And he, she said, sometimes he would say things to me about what he was studying and it would scare me to death. And anyway, um, but it says, um, for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say peace and safely, safety, then sudden destruction will come upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But you, brethren, are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. He plainly says, we don't have to worry about that. So anyway, that's not our subject for the day, but I just thought I'd throw that in there in case you go read the chapter. Our subject is Christian conduct, okay? A subject that oh, we all could use, right? Um, and it was really, it's really nice, and um, you can go read that today um, as well. Uh, but what he's talking about is the ministry, okay? The ministry and how we should pray for those in ministry, okay? Um, da, 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 I lost my place. <laughs> okay. Brethren, pray for us. This one morning in the year, we reserve to refresh the reader's memory about prayer for ministers and we do most earnestly implore implore every christian household to grant the fervent request of the text first uttered by an apostle and now repeated by us brethren pray for us brethren our work is significant involving blemish or misery to thousands. We treat with souls for God on eternal business. And our word is either a savor of life unto life or death unto death. So he's letting you know that the minister's work is important. And uh, they work, they do. Uh, it's probably the most stressful job on the face of the planet is being a minister of a church. Sorry, but I got to itch. And I say that because everybody confides in them, okay? They get all the stories. They know all the scoop, scoop. They know all the secrets of the families that are in desperate need of prayer. So they get to see the sin in their own people. And I'm sure it hurts their hearts. Um, and it's hard work. Okay, me and Chris used to do a singles class, all right, and we did it for years. We loved doing the singles. They were ages from their 20s to, to up to like 35-ish. They had a special place in our heart, but it was such a roller coaster when you're the uh, 
leader of a group per se because <clears throat> of course we had some that used to be wild and had straightened up and then we had others we had they would date and then they might split up but we had a lot of things that would go on um, and then later on we were finding out they were meeting some of them were meeting and partying and drinking and doing all this stuff and it was just so hard for us because we loved them so much and we didn't want to see them go down the wrong road and so it was a really high at times and a really low at other times and that's what he's talking about here it says a very heavy responsibility rests upon us and it will be no small mercy if at last we are found clear of the blood of all men. As officers in Christ's army, we are the special mark of the rivalry of men and devils. They watch for our halting and labor to take us by the heels. Our sacred calling involves us in temptations from which you are exempt. Our calling all too often draws us away from our personal enjoyment of truth into a ministerial and official consideration of it. So what he's saying, oh, he says we meet with many rough cases and our intelligences are none. So what he's saying is that we're tempted in ways that you would never be tempted. Um, and because you're in the ministry, you tend to study the Bible. Uh, so you look at the truth in a, a official way, a ministerial way, instead of a personal enjoyment. Okay, and that's a big thing. When you're in the ministry, you have to make sure you have time for personal enjoyment. And many, many people who are in the ministry don't get to do that. And I'll tell you why, because there's a very small percentage of the church that works in the church and a huge percentage that just want to go to church. And so it, the people who are um, full of the zeal and the passion um, wind up being the ones who are overworked. So you have to be real careful if you are in the ministry. I will give you some advice. Chris always said, do one thing. And do it right and no matter how tempted you are no matter how uh, much of a need the church is for other positions say no do one thing and do it right if you do three things it's hard to do it right okay I was able to help Chris with singles work in the nursery because it don't take a lot of mental I mean it wasn't a mental thing and I also worked um, just in the kitchen when we would have meals but I didn't teach so I could do all of that but Chris taught so he just did one thing um, so I hope that helps you get the picture there if you're in the ministry and you're doing three or four things you're probably not getting the personal enjoyment um, of your Bible and your readings as you should and you need to take that very seriously we observe very sad backslidings yep our hearts are wounded we see millions perishing and our spirits sink we wish to profit you by our preaching we desire to be blessed to your children we long to be useful both to saints and sinners therefore dear friends intercede for us with our God miserable man we are if we miss the aid of your prayers but happy are we if we live in your supplications you do not look to us but to our master for spiritual blessings and yet how many times has he given those blessings through his ministers ask then again and again that we may be the earthen vessels into which the Lord may put the treasure of the gospel. We, the whole company of missionaries, ministers, city missionaries, and students, do in the name of Jesus beseech you. So he's pretty much begging for 
your prayers. And that's very true because many of us, and I'm even guilty, will go to church and uh, think about the things we like, think about the things we don't like, think about the people that we think are sweet, the people we don't think are all that sweet. And we tend to pick apart things more than we pray for things. Um, that's because uh, of several things. It makes us feel superior, more superior. And I know that it's hard to um, admit that, but it's true deep down. If you're picking somebody apart, you think you're better. Um, we do it because we're unhappy. Um, we do it because we're not right with God. We do it because we're going to church for the wrong reasons. We do it because just because, you know, and so more than anything, he's begging us to pray for the ministers. Amen and amen and amen goes right there. All the ministers, whether you're somebody that goes into the jail and ministers, teaches a class, uh, does a Bible study, um, is a preacher, any kind of ministry, Please keep them in your prayers and, of course, the missionaries as well. Um, so I hope today's lesson uh, finds you well. It is very appropriate. God's always on time for it to be pray for us because not only am I one that's over Bible study with you guys and I do need your prayers, um, we also have a storm coming through today. But you know what? Our God is an awesome God. And no matter what he does, I'm ready. I'm ready to, to take on whatever he's got. Um, even if he takes me home for some crazy reason, one of these huge trees fall on my house. I'm not scared. I'm not worried. But I'm not stupid either. I will take precautions. Okay. <laughs> um, I hope y'all have a wonderful day. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer. And um, I will try to keep you updated once the storm comes into our area. Okay, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for today. We thank you for loving us. We thank you for the scripture, Lord, for we need to pray for the ministry. We need to pray for all of those out there that are letting their bodies and their souls um, worship and be used by you every day to be an example, no matter who they are, an individual just given a testimony in the Walmart all the way to a missionary across the world. We're all saints. We are all vessels. And may you give us the courage that we need to spread the gospel and make it first and foremost instead of the things that don't even, uh, the, the things that people want to complain about or, or um, argue about as far as the word of God goes. May they just focus on the gospel because it's the gospel um, that saves us. And we just thank you so much for it. Be with all of those in the path of the storm. I pray that they are smart and that they do uh, take the warnings and get in the locations in their homes that they need to be in in order uh, for the storm to pass. Uh, I just pray that uh, no matter the destruction, that souls will not be lost. And if they are taken, I pray that they know you and it's their time to come and see you. Um, we just thank you for all you do for us. And in Christ's name we pray. Amen. You guys, I have a lot of prayer requests. So I'm going to list them today. Um, when I get off here, I promise. I'm not in one of those moods like I was yesterday where I just couldn't get anything right. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. All right. Y'all have a blessed day. We'll see you later. Love you. Bye.